Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanalee's at Dawn. We just completed a friendly best of three between Google Frog and Akinim, which ended interestingly. Like, I've never seen that strategy in Zero K before. It seemed appropriate, seeing as the map was based on a StarCraft 2 map, but I had never seen that strategy in Zero K before. Anyway, now we're going to have a one shot between Google Frog and Klon on Living Lands, just to close things out. So, this map is one of my. Actually, probably my favorite maps. I like this map. This is a cool map. It's quite small, but it's one of those small maps that gives us really nice, cozy feel to it. It's just it's small, but it feels complete in its small size. Like it's like an arena. I, I like it. But yes, this map, unlike Deadlands, the center isn't quite as big of a focus, but it's still fairly important to get the ring around the center. But the outside becomes a big focus. Most players will typically start to expand along the outside. Usually one pl here's like the south player tends to go to the northwest and then actually no never mind sorry the north player tends to go to the northwest and the south player goes to the southeast that's typically how it goes in that order going to the southwest is going for jump bots while Google going for shield bots so shield bot versus jump bot a matchup I actually alluded to in the first match between Google Frog and Aquanim although that was actually not jump bot that was versus spiders shield bot versus spiders. Shieldbot versus Jumpbot is a little bit more explored, and it's a matchup where we probably won't see many puppies because they do not do well against bandits. Probably will see some moderators though because they do well against pretty much anything slow, and that's most of the Shieldbot factory. But I'm curious to see what the players do go for, especially because at this point neither player quite knows what the other one is up to. Not yet anyway, not until right now. Or just about right now. There we go. So, Clone sees shield bots. Did they switch to anything? No, they're sticking on Pyro, which makes sense. Because, I mean, at this point, why wouldn't you? Pyros are strong. They do a pretty good job. I mean, you can more easily with bandits deal with Pyros than you can with Claves. Like, the meta for Clogy versus Jumpbot right now is basically using Glaive Tick. It used to be used Zeus because Zeus deals with Pyros really easily, but moderators deal with Zeus really easily. So then Glaive Tick became a thing. But Glaive Tick's really hard to actually do, so I think a lot of players are just going for Shield Bot or maybe Spider Bot. Not really bother or just going Jump Bot themselves, not really bothering with Cloaky. Because while it's possible, it's also really tough. And why go for the tough option when an easier option works just as well? I mean really. Yeah, at this point, Cloakie has kind of gone from being one of the most popular bot factories to the least popular bot factory. Which is really interesting. It does seem to be the jump bot matchup that's done it, but in part, I think it might also be... Just... People maybe getting more used to shields? Because the Cloakie shield bot matchup is pretty okay, but the jump bot matchup is probably... It seems apparently easier for shields. And... The spider bot matchup is probably easier for Cloaky, but spiders don't come up too much. <laughs> and the Amphib matchup is a pain in the butt for Cloaky. I mean, it's manageable, it's just re it's just getting through ducks. Getting through ducks is a pain. But I think mainly it's the jump bot matchup. Because puppies deal with glaives no problem, they don't even need pyros, they just get a bunch of puppies. And the glaives are all dead. Yeah, at this point, just glaive versus bandit versus pyro. That's all it is. Google Frog expanded to the northwest and actually expanded to the southeast as well. Clone starting to expand to the northwest, but not as quickly. Lotus is being built up. Two lotuses will probably not be enough to deal with these pyros coming in. Yep, three pyros coming in here. Still gonna be a problem. And in they go. Is it gonna work? I don't think so. Yeah, that one Pyro's... Or the two Pyro's actually gotten rid of it, so that Convict's down. Everything's down. The Northwest is pretty open. Google Frog's counterattack coming in a little bit late, and leaving the center open. Is Gloan going to take advantage of this? No, no, they are not. They are probably aware of it, though. Nope, not really. I actually don't really know. Google Frog also in front of their radar. Very far in front of their radar, relying entirely on line of sight. Risky business, and it's not paying off. 
Losing two bandits for really no cost. Okay, this is getting annoying. Uh, I don't know why I have this on sometimes. For maps like Ravage, it makes sense. Sorry, the smooth, smooth mesh scrolling option is annoying sometimes. It's cool, but at the same time, it's like I zoom into something and then it bounces me because it didn't put me on the smooth mesh. If I knew it was that actually controlled the smooth mesh scrolling, then it'd be easier, but I don't. You can probably manage it that when you move the camera around or zoom it around or whatever, it sticks to the zoom to the smoothed mesh rather than using the actual mesh. Anyway, that aside, that dealt with. Clone now should be more able to deal with this. Yeah, Google Fox Commander in a really bad position. Yeah, that commander is dead. That is a big blow. Google Fox at this point pretty much had economic parity as a result of that commander, and now with it gone, that's going to be a problem. It's going to be a major problem. The bandits are still doing fine, and racketeers as well. Those racketeers have been just pulling their weight every single game. I mean, if mod raiders were to come out, the racketeers would just deal with them. That would be it. Jacks are coming out instead, which is going to be harder for the racketeer to deal with. That is something that I think a thug could deal with, no problem, though. Yeah, a few thugs could deal with that without too much issue. Bandits could deal with it. Rogues could really deal with it. I don't know why I keep forgetting rogues. Rogues! Rogues, 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 rogues. Always rogues. Rogues deal with a lot of things. Slow-moving melee units being one of them. The clone taking that center, getting that really nice position. They're economy not too far ahead of Google Frogs, but still ahead enough, and Google Frog can't easily expand to the southeast corner and the northwest corner. Southeast corner, however, will be easier to expand to. But they seem to be more focused on defending the entrance from the center hill. Probably a good idea. That center hill is going to be a major thorn in Google Frog's side. And they need to make sure that they can minimize its impact as much as possible. Northwest being slowly crept up by Kloon. Kloon being Kloon, building up static defenses everywhere. Google Frog getting a few here and there, but nowhere near as many as Kloon. Kloon is a highly defensive player, or typically has been. Oh, and that commander medal. That commander medal. If anything's going to turn this game around, it's going to be that commander medal. Clone so far ahead. They need they need energy. They need energy fast. I'm actually surprised they haven't been building power plants right now. Okay, there they go, getting a few power plants up, but not enough. They need far more. Like they're accessing that commander medal. But yeah, that is going to be a big difference. God, how many jacks do they have? Oh, just one. But still, dealing with that's going to be a problem. Google Frog just trying to do what they can to wall off. Not taking the southeast, though. Leaving that open for Clone. Completely open for Clone. Clone can just expand there at their leisure. But they're already ahead economically. Google Frog looks like they want to explore that northwest. But that Jack. Jack and Power coming in here. Getting rid of the Defender line. Defender's just now reloading. Finally fire off again. At least they got... Okay, they got weakened enough for the Racketeer to work. 1,500 damage. Yeah, so two Racketeer missiles at this point will stop the Jack. But there's another Jack on the way. That's just been constructed. And Felon come... Okay, why? I mean, okay, I'll grant. Felon is a bit of a go-to unit for Endgame. And against the Pyros, it makes a lot of sense. But Google Frog has to be careful to target the Pyros and not the Jack. Because those pyros, they're important. They're a thing you need to deal with. The jack, that's something where if it gets targeted, then everything else dies. Because if the jack gets targeted, the felon loses all the shields, the jack does not die, and then everything on the shield bot side dies. Clon very nearly taking the northwest side. Ooh, looks like... Did they lose all these bandits? No, it looks like Google Frog just didn't find anything and didn't bother to explore further, but that doesn't really matter. Because that was when the defenders were being attacked. Didn't want to lose focus on that too much. And be a clone with a strong center position. Felling up. Thugs are up to help support this. But this is a last stand. This is Google Frog's last stand right now. Coming in, dealing with three jacks. Well, two jacks. Third one just rolled off the platform. But two jacks at the front are going to be a major hurdle. 
The racketeer is doing a fine job, a racketeer rather, single, singular racketeer, doing a fine job here, but still going to be a problem. And with those pyros not in position, the pyros haven't been already been dealt with, there's not much that Felon can do. It actually doesn't want to attack. Is it on hold fire? No, it is not on hold fire. That could be disastrous. Being that there's only jacks to deal with, that could remove all of the shields right away. Google Frog not even approaching. They're probably aware that there are... I mean, they're aware of the jacks, for sure. Not sure if they're aware of the positions of the jacks relative to everything else, but they are aware the jacks exist. And rogues coming in. There we go. There's the rogues. And bandits for a nice harassment attempt. There we go. Getting the southeast. The southeast is being constructed. Has no defenses right now. Clone, just emergency setting up defense. Not emergency. No, that's not emergency at all. That's just I'm gonna get defenses eventually. Well, eventually is too long. And the freaker, freaker being somewhat problematic to its own ally there, stopping that slowdown from happening. But the felon does lose its shields. Google Frog wisely pulling everything else away so the shield link does not drain the thug shields at least. Felons are in position, so, well, a couple of felons are in position. I would think you need about a half a dozen or so, but still, that's not bad. And a Newton, because why not? Haven't seen those in a while. Actually, that's a really good idea. I'm pretty sure you can jump out of impulse. Stuff's attracting you, repelling you, you can jump out of it. But burning jump like that, that would end up landing in the middle of a bunch of powerful units, is not something you want to do lightly. Still, Clone has that center. Like right now, Clone basically has everything here. These two metal extractors are open. The rest of them, it's going to be a slog to try to keep any of them. Thankfully, the southeast for Google Frog has been taken care of. At least partially, but the northwest is still Clone's territory. Clone not using as best they could. Google Frog also having a bit of a hard time maintaining what they have. And that Newton about to go down, or, well, getting attacked, probably going to go down fairly soon. That Jack. Jack does not get pushed very hard. The jacks are just way too heavy for the Newton to be effective. And at this point, no outlaws or thugs are... This is where the felon would be very useful, but the felon is dead. And another felon on the way, but the, th the pyros are all dead. So everything, in terms of when things are and aren't in play, is working very well for Kloon and not very well for Google Frog. The timing is just not working out. The Northwest, pretty heavily defended. No easy way into that. The thugs could take it, but they are needed on that front line. And that Jack about to be stunned out. Ah, oh, just about stunned out. No, the Racketeer retreating, so that Jack will have free reign to get rid of this eastern base. The center is still clones. Clone basically has this game, I and mean, they've... Google Frog has been fighting really hard, but Clone has basically had this game this whole game. They've had an economic advantage from the start. They were able to get rid of a lot of Google Frog's units early on. Get, a lot of, get rid of a lot of Google Frog's early expansion attempts. And it's been hard for Google Frog to really break through this defensive line. I mean, the thing with Shieldbot is they only have the Racketeers for artillery, which are useful, but they're limited in that they really require follow-up. And they don't have follow-up on hand, right? Oh, they do now, I suppose. And the Thugs are taking that northwest side, leaving the center open, and Clone, they will have bandits to deal with if they try to take the center, but they're not going to worry about it too much. Instead, just going to burn this out. And this is where I would recommend a Thunderbird. I mean, seriously. A Thunderbird would finish the game. This whole area got stunned out. Google Frog would have these bandits, and that's it. They'd probably go for one last rush. And then they'd throw in the towel. But with no Thunderbirds, there's no real threat. The Phoenix has provided a bit of a threat, but honestly, not that much. No, move back, move forward, no big deal. The shields cover most of the damage that needs to be worried about. But it looks like Phoenix Napalm does go through shields. Or at least hits the ground. And this is where it becomes a bit more of a threat. Actually, oh wow. Oh wow, that is... That's the damage clone needed. At this point the bandit's moving in, but still not doing a whole lot. The Jack's going to move in to clean up, finish this entire area off. The Pyro's not in range of that Felon, which they need to be in range of for it to be useful. 
Light vehicle switch, probably for Wolverines, but that's too late. Pyro is thankfully unable to do too much damage for Google. Well, thankfully for Google Fog, unable to do too much damage. The Jack's moving in, burning the Felon shields. Thugs trying to avoid being for shield, being there for Shield Link. And that Felon down. That Felon going down is not good, but mainly it was the Thugs going down before that stopped that assault. And there's no easy. There's no way Vandals are coming in. Crashers might come in, but I think it's mainly for Wolverines. We'll see, though. Outlaws to deal with the Pyros, and surprisingly, not any Napalm shots being used in their Bandits, which is what you'd expect them to be used on, at least... Naively, you'd expect it to be used on Bandits, but apparently not. Oh, if Outlaws were here, that'd be awesome. Where's the Outlaw? The Outlaw's right behind here. Because slowing down Jax means all the time in the world to deal with them. There we go, get that slow effect on there. And get the outlaws out of the way because they're still strong melee units you're dealing with here. But yeah, that slow effect is going to be greatly useful. Assuming that they can actually get some follow up here. That's the one thing, it's just been follow up. Like, follow up and ordering. When and where units are where they are. But at this point, I mean, there are vandals up. Clone. And they have their airplane factory, they have their jump bot factory, they have 50 metal income. They don't have, they're just going for jacks, they don't have any strategies or anything, they're just going for jacks. Continuing along with that, and Google Frog way behind economically. And they're actually doing surprisingly well militarily, mind you. Especially given that Clone is just such a defensive player, I mean, they've been repairing their jacks as well in the center of the map. But yeah, they've still been losing stuff. Google Frog's still able to break through that defense somewhat, but... That is a, an iron wall. And Google Frog not bothering to try to break it down any further. Throws in the towel and that is game. And yeah, clone, I mean, look at the metal. That had a bit of excess, but basically they had a metal advantage the entire game. Or at least the last two thirds of the game. Google Frog with a great, okay, actually, you know, Google Frog is far less efficient. Clone was in fact more efficient. Being that clone is clone, I'm not surprised, but yeah, I thought they were being less efficient, but it looks like nope. The entire time they lost no more than half as many units as Google Frog did. Well, that is... That's clone. That's clone for you. Very tough to break through once they get set up. Anyway, that is going to be it for me tonight, so thank you for watching. Oh, Jack Pierce's shield, so yeah. Fair point. Anyway, that was interesting. Shieldbot versus Jumpbot. Not a match we see often. And now I'm starting to wonder how it is that Shieldbot actually is considered a stronger option. I think Jumpbot's really considered the strong option against Jumpbot. I mean, Rogues probably would have been really handy for for Jack, but... I mean, Sprung's pointing out they could be jumped onto by the Jacks. Which is true, they could have been. It also means then the Jacks are using their jump. Which means they can't escape if they start to get surrounded and damaged heavily. But yeah, that was... Hmm. Another matchup I want to see more explored. And given that Shieldbot is fairly popular now, I imagine it will be more explored. Anyway, that was that, so thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everyone.